Now this is a view of a place called Porlock Weir in Somerset in England and it's a delightful little harbour and a very distinctive set of cottages, the end one of which has a thatched roof and you'll find wherever you go in the southwest of England someone somewhere will have done a painting of this particular location. Now as I said before perspective is something that you can get really bored by if you read lots of books about architectural perspective where you're in a drawing office. For the artist the good news is that it's so much simpler. If it looks right it is right and the simplest rule of all is the horizon line or your eye line which in this case is approximately here that any lines, any converging lines, in this case the line of the roof, the line of the top of the windows, the bottom of the windows, any lines above your eye line will move downwards towards it and any converging lines below your eye line will move up as in this river bank here. So what I'm going to do is paint the sky very very simply it's quite busy in the rest of the picture so you want a fairly simple sky. I'm going to start off ultramarine blue and raw sienna, a little bit of permanent rose added to the ultramarine blue to give a little bit of variation but that's going to be a very very simple sky washed over that. Normally in a lot of pictures the cottages are the focal point, in this case I want them to be a backdrop because we're going to concentrate for your benefit on how to do the reflections in rippled water and particularly where you have a white boat here or a white hull because that causes a lot of problems for people knowing how to reserve a lighter coloured space where they're putting dark reflections. Right now you can see that I've put clean water over all of the picture down to that water line there around the outside of the yacht simply because I'm going to run some raw sienna into that and that's going to add quite a bit of warmth and certainly give a bit of unity. You can see only very very faint straight over the hillside. You see I'm just letting this blend, not letting it get down towards the horizon. Right, including putting the water on and the raw sienna over here and then putting the sky mixture on. The whole lot's taking me no more than about 60 seconds, a minute and a half for the outside. I'll just put a warmish mixture here of raw sienna just to give some foreground warmth where there's going to be a little bit of uh, rocks and grass and what have you. Right now you can see I've just put a very simple treatment in of the background hills of the same colour as the sky basically but I've just added a few very pale streaks of raw sienna in here and there that just warms things up. So here we go with the, the burnt umber wash, the base colour on the roof and in a similar fashion for the the thatched roof. Now you can see that the streaks, although I'm not making any attempt to paint individual tiles or lines of tiles, the streaks are actually following the line of the roof. Now for the thatched cottage I'm using more burnt umber. Now while I'm at it, this is quite a rusty roof but I don't want it to be too bright rust because otherwise the eye is going to get led out towards the corner of the picture. Right I'm putting a very light wash now of burnt umber on this part of the building just to fill in some of the gaps really on the walls. Now the shadow area on this wall is actually a quite a different colour because it's uh, mainly exposed stone so I'm going to just, I've just added a little bit of pale sky colour to it just to give it a shadow and an essential difference in character. Right now I'm just putting some of that shadow colour in which is essentially bluey grey into all the window and door areas that just gives a nice impression varying the colour slightly of old wooden doors with paint flaking off right I'm just going to paint in that wall the same as this which I've just realised I've missed and then it's a little bit of greenery along the top here where there's some grassy areas and then a light bluey grey using a touch of the sky, pale sky colour with the burnt umber, very very pale, streaked again because this rocky 
uh, foreshore or rocky bank here is something that we just want to create and leave lots of highlights on but I also want to make sure I create that sloping bank so that's the way the brush strokes will go now you see the way I'm, I'm painting around the boat like that very very simply that just gives me the line of the boat and then dragging that color away now that falls downwards like that Put a little bit more blue in there because it's got a, a little bit further away so it will appear a little bit cooler than this area here. As I say going to be loads of uh, light colours that's a set of steps down to the the water's edge because a lot of this area here is crisscrossed with chains and uh, steel wires and ropes so you get quite a bit of rust put a little bit of blue into that dampened area there like that just drag that out slightly it'll die back quite a bit but in the meantime it'll also help to give us a nice definition of the, the line of the steps now this is a very rocky little sort of bank here so this all helps to start you off in the right way by giving you a nice impression of stones and rocks. You're, just, you're not painting them, you're just sort of painting the damp paper underneath those light areas. And as ever, the watercolour will come along and paint it for you. But you can see how I've just deliberately left that little white fleck on the top there. And that gives an impression. It not only breaks up the grassy bank from the distant hills. It also helps to give the impression that the sunlight is just catching the top. Right now we've got quite a strong harbour wall in some fairly deep shadow here. So we'll just bring that along like that. Round the stern of the boat must keep, now I've got to keep that straight because that's the the water level so that's got to be straight and horizontal. Little bit of dark, dark green, I suppose, to represent the uh, the tide mark. Literally, the tide mark. Now, this side, being in sunlight, because it comes round at 90 degrees, is altogether lighter. Again, just burnt umber, watery wash of burnt umber. A little bit of uh, ultramarine blue added to that. Would you believe? Touch the top of that. That'll dry off very, very light still, but it'll give us a little bit more definition to the steps. 